Hey guys, today we're going in an in-depth guide on how to get the best possible visual gaming experience without increasing input lag, all whilst maximizing input consistency. So let's jump straight into it. So first, what is tearing? Simply put, tearing is the simultaneous display of two different frames on the screen, causing a visible tear line. As you can see, there's one frame on top and one frame on the bottom showed at the same time. So you may already be used to this and not notice it much, especially if you game at higher frame rates and higher refresh rates. But once you get rid of it, what you're going to notice is pretty much a further increase in refresh rate, as everything is now overall more clear. So how do you eliminate tearing? There are two ways. The first is vertical sync, also known as V-Sync. It doesn't require any particular hardware, but has the big drawback of adding input lag, which of course we want to avoid like the plague in competitive games. The second one is adaptive sync, called G-Sync by Nvidia or FreeSync by AMD, and is also known as variable refresh rate. This technology allows you to use V-Sync without the added input lag, provided you never exceed your monitor's refresh rate. Your monitor has to feature this technology, of course, though. So if you want to know more about these topics, I linked a rocket science video in the description. So how do you set up your adaptive sync monitor? I linked the Blurbusters article in the description and I'm going to quickly show you now. I have an NVIDIA GPU and a FreeSync G-Sync compatible monitor, but the same can be done with the AMD equivalents. Go on NVIDIA control panel that you can download from uh, the Microsoft store. You enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, you enable it for full screen mode, you enable the display specific settings, and then you go in manage 3D settings right here and you enable vertical sync on either from global settings if you plan on using this configuration everywhere like I am or you can do this also from the program settings so you go in just into Rocket League and you activate it from here with on then the next thing you want to do is to go in game settings video you play on full screen right now I'm playing on borderless because I'm recording and then you deactivate vertical sync from here and you hit apply. The last step would be to cap your FPS to 3 below the monitor's refresh rate. Why? Because we have to make up for those frames that might be faster than the refresh rate of your monitor, for example less than 4.17 milliseconds on 240 Hz, because these frames would trigger the full V-Sync input lag since they exceeded the monitor's refresh rate, even for just a little bit of time. We're not going to do this last step though, because there's been an interesting analysis by Rocket Science, which I linked below, which shows that the highest level of input consistency is given by having FPS that are multiples of 60. This means that the best FPS values are usually 120, which is kind of low, 240, which is just right, or 360, which is overkill, in my opinion. But if we cap our FPS to 3 below the monitor's refresh rate, this means that we're not going to run at a multiple of 60. So in the example of 240 Hz, we would run at 237, which is not a multiple of 60. So how do we overcome this issue? We can overclock the monitor's refresh rate by 3 or 4 Hz, so that it reaches, for example, 243 or 244, and we can cap it at 240 while still keeping our frame rate 3 below the monitor's refresh rate. As you can see right here, I still have 240. So how do you overclock your monitor? In the description you will find how to geeks guide for reference, but I also show it here. There are two ways. From the video control panel, you just go into change resolution, you select your main monitor, then you go into customize, create custom resolution, you decide the resolution, so the highest available on your monitor, in my case QHD, and then the refresh rate, you just bump it up by 3 or 4 Hz. Then you hit test, and if the test goes well, the custom resolution will be added right here. You select it, you enable custom resolutions not exposed by the display, click OK, you make sure the refresh rate is the right one right here, and then you click on Apply. The other way you can do this is by using another tool called the CRU, Custom Resolution Utility. Select your main monitor, as usual. These are the standard resolutions, you go into Add, and then you select the resolution from here. You can use 1080p, but if you have a QHD monitor, it's not going to be here, so you have to type the resolution manually and here, the refresh rate. Uh, this did not work for me, so I used the other method instead because I'm uh, on a QHD monitor, I guess. 
then you hit OK and you reboot your PC. Now you will also need to overclock the refresh rate in which Adaptive Sync works. Otherwise, your 240 FPS will still sometimes exceed it, triggering the full VSync input lag. So how do you do this? You go into Range Limits right here, Edit, and then you can change this one right here, the V rate, the maximum to 244, which is a new refresh rate overclocked of our monitor. You can also change the lower limit right here to make up for the so-called free sync flickering. This phenomenon happens in presence of highly unstable frame rates, for example in the menus in Rocket League, which quickly dip under and over the minimum adaptive sync refresh rate, showed right here, and this causes the free sync to switch on and off very quickly and causes a flickering. So if you increase this, you can limit or even completely remove this kind of a problem. You should increase this as little as you can until you don't notice the flickering anymore. So the last thing we want to do is to set up the overdrive. Overdrive is a, a commercial name, but it's usually the most used one. You can also find the same setting under the name response time or trace free or rampage response, similar stuff. And this is a setting that is found on your OSD, so the on-screen display of your monitor, and it is used to reduce and completely prevent ghosting if you set it up right. So what is ghosting? It is a visible trail of color left behind a fast moving object. So how do you set it up? First you go on this link right here, which I linked in the description. Then you look for blurry trails on the left side of the UFO. Usually the one on top is the one that is most prone to ghosting artifacts. At this point you increase your overdrive setting using your monitor's on-screen display till you see no ghosting anymore. Increase it as much as possible without having the inverse thing. So basically, once you start noticing inverse ghosting or corona artifacts, it means that you bumped the overdrive slider too high. So how do you notice this? Here we can see some examples. So this is just right, this is ghosting, and this is coronas. Right, ghosting, coronas. In conclusion, now you have set up everything that you need in order to game without tearing, without ghosting, and without any added input lag, and also with the best input consistency possible. So if you found this video helpful, share it with your friends, like it, and uh, yeah, that's it. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.